But in my collection, I just really don't see any more space for another Mini Kelly 22. Hello my friends, I did a video rant this time last year on luxury items that I won't be buying moving forward and since it's been over a year I figured it's about time that I give you an update on whether or not I was able to stick to my plan and if so am I glad that I banned myself from buying these pieces or is there something that I feel like I missed out on? And of course, we'll also update the list. I'll let you know what pieces are staying, what is being removed. Is there anything that's being added to the list of pieces that I won't be buying, frankly, in 2022? Now, some of these pieces I do already own and love, but I feel like I'm kind of kept out at this point and it would be redundant to keep buying the same thing over and over and over again. And then on the other hand, there are some pieces that I just genuinely don't think are worth the money, the hype and your investment. So without further ado, if you'd like to hear what Hermes bag you won't see me unboxing anytime soon and so much more, then please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and keep on watching. One of the first pieces that I mentioned in last year's video that I wasn't planning on buying any more of was fashion jewelry. And I think to be exact, I said that I don't want to buy any more than maybe one or two new launches each year, which I felt was the perfect compromise. And it's something that I was able to stick to. Round of applause, please. I only bought, I think, one piece of fashion jewelry this year, which was my CDC picnic. Is it something that I could have gone without? Absolutely, but at the end of the day, it's such a unique piece that Hermes doesn't always have around that I'm glad I was able to get my hands on it when it was relaunched. But other than that, I'm thrilled I was able to resist the temptation. Not that there is anything wrong with fashion jewelry or custom jewelry. There is absolutely a time and a place for it. If you're just kickstarting your luxury collection, it's a great place to start. Or if you're looking to make a statement without breaking the bank, custom jewelry is a great place to look. But there comes a point when if you keep buying the same or similar pieces just in different colors and finishes and metal platings, that they become repetitive and they won't add anything new, fresh and exciting to your collection and even to an outfit when you look at it as a whole. So for me, fashion jewelry is something that I have to be careful with and remind myself to not buy something new each month of course, keep an eye out for new exciting launches, but I would much rather put that money towards buying actual fine jewelry pieces that will last a lifetime and will take my collection into a completely new dimension. This next piece, or more like pieces, I have to be honest, I was kind of scared to make a commitment and say that I won't be buying any more of because I thought I was going to fail but guess what, I didn't, which are bath charms and to be more specific, Hermes rodeos. Just because I go through phases of sometimes enjoying rodeos and then other times when I cannot even stand the idea of putting anything on my bags. And I'm definitely in a phase of not really reaching for my rodeos. And because of that, perhaps I had an easier time, but rodeos are the one thing that I would say I made the mistake of going crazy with. There is nothing wrong with having one or two of them around, but just like with fashion jewelry, there comes a point when they all start looking exactly the same. You can buy them in every single color of the rainbow with every single color combination. After having three or four of them, they honestly won't make that big of a difference. So for me, rodeos are the one thing that I promised myself I won't be buying any more of. And I actually didn't, even though I was tempted a 
couple of times throughout the year. I was offered the new Fodio Touch in all black, which I did consider for a brief second, but then I thought about all the other rodeos that I already own and never reached for. Not to mention that I feel like their rodeo touch launch was kind of underwhelming. I personally got really excited when I first heard that they're going to be coming out with a touch line in rodeos because it could have been so incredibly cool, but seeing them in person was really underwhelming. I don't know what I expected, but I know a lot more than just a tiny microscopic piece of alligator or lizard on the saddle. I just don't think it made that big of a difference, especially for the price that they were asking for it. And then the other piece that I was really excited for, and I was going to go back on my word and actually add this piece to my collection was the Rodeo Teddy, which I don't even want to get into. I think this picture speaks for itself, but in case you're interested in a more in-depth review on why I think this back charm is one of the worst launches from Hermes in a really long time, um, make sure to have a video linked up here for you. So back charms are definitely staying on my list of pieces that I won't be buying from Hermes and of course from other brands too. And it seems like that Hermes is making my life a lot easier with all these questionable new launches that honestly I wouldn't even consider if I was allowed to. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like just because you enjoy luxury fashion doesn't mean that you'll enjoy buying everything luxury related equally. Everyone has their things and the things that they don't enjoy quite as much. And for me, the pieces that get me the least excited have to be shoes. I know so many people out there love shoes, but I am a true creature of habit when it comes to shoes. I always go back to the same pair that I know are comfortable, that suit me, and that go with everything and anything, which Recently, I have to say, have been my Avanta sneakers, which I recently picked up a new pair of that I've been needing. I also bought a new pair of Chanel sneakers, which is not a regret. So even though I said that I won't be buying any more new shoes in 2021, just because I have so many pairs that I have virtually never touched, there are some sneakers and some shoes that I love and I know I'll continue buying fresh pairs of just because I love them so much. So I would tweak this by saying that I won't be buying any more new boots moving forward, just because I'm all kept out when it comes to boots. All my bases are literally covered. I have a pair of boots that are a little bit more sort of trendy, that make more of a statement, that are not so comfortable. I have a pair of boots that are more formal, that I could even wear with a suit. And I also have a pair that's not only incredibly stylish, but it's also comfortable, it's practical, it's reliable, and it goes with everything that I could possibly think of. So when it comes to my boots collection, I'm all capped out. I do still think that boots are a staple to have in your portfolio. They're great things to have. But for me, I just really don't need any more of them, especially because I don't really use them quite as often as I use my sneakers. So they tend to hold up a lot better and a lot longer. So for me, boots are the next thing that I try not to buy any more of moving forward. We're adding something new to the list this time around, which I didn't even think of last year. And I have to be honest, I think this one is going to be the toughest one to resist, which is not buying any more wallets and card holders. SLGs I don't have an issue with, I can easily say no to them, but card holders specifically, I absolutely love buying new versions of, but I have to put an end to it because there are already two pieces that I'm thinking about buying before the year ends. Even though I have drawers filled with pieces that I never reach for, and what I've been thinking about a lot is that it's not only the money that I'm spending on these small pieces that could go towards a larger purchase like a bag, 
but it's also the impact that I have on the environment of buying all these things that I just never use. And yes, they bring me joy. I enjoy looking at them. But at the end of the day, I really don't need them. And trust me, you're not going to get a lecture from me on consumption and on sustainability. But I'm trying to make baby steps on becoming a little bit more conscious about what I buy. And just because I have so many card holders and wallets, this might be a category that I have to skip at least for the next year, mainly because I'm just not the type of person who changes up their wallets and their card holders that often. When I buy something new, I usually just stick with it until I buy something even newer. It's not like I go back and forth between the pieces that I already own and my more recent acquisitions. So at this point, I feel like it would be wasteful for me to buy anything new, but that doesn't mean it won't be tough for me to stick to this because there are already two pieces that I've had my eyes on, surprisingly, both from Hermes. One of them, which I talked about earlier in the year, the Kelly Pocket. I mentioned that I would love to pick up another Kelly Pocket just because it's one of my all-time favorite pieces from Hermes. So I've definitely been considering adding it to my collection, maybe in a beautiful neutral shade. And then there is also a newer launch from Hermes, which caught my attention. This piece is definitely a lot more playful and funky than what I would usually go for. But that's exactly why I felt it would be so much fun. Although who knows, it might be just a phase that I'm going through. But the in the loop card holder is something that has been around for a long time. I've always liked the idea of it, but I never found a colorway or a color combination that truly spoke to me until this new edition that has the cutest little smiley face design on it, which as I said, is not something that I would usually go for. It's definitely a lot more playful than my usual aesthetic. But that's exactly what stood out to me. And if you've always liked the idea of the Kelly doll bag, but you never wanted to go through the paint of hunting down such a highly coveted piece, this will give you a similar idea and a similar feel. And hopefully it won't take you quite as long to hunt this down as it would to find a Kelly doll piece. And it's just a great way to dip your toes into the world of more playful and funky RMS pieces. So yes, I'll try not to buy any more wallets and card holders, but that doesn't mean that I won't be a bad influence on you and give you plenty of recommendations. And last but not least, you may remember that last year I mentioned that I won't be buying any more mini and micro bags, which really didn't work out that well considering that I got another mini Kelly just a couple of months after me uploading that video. But at this point, I can say that unless I find a mini Kelly in one color that I've had on my mind, I really don't think I'll be adding any more to my collection. And before you have a heart attack, no, I still very much adore the mini Kelly. It's still one of my favorite bags, but I just really cannot see myself buying any more of it, especially because I always go back to mine in black Epsom, that is just my holy grail mini bag, or at least it was until the Kelly Pochette came around. I have recently done a super in-depth deep dive on the Kelly Pochette and compared it to the mini Kelly. And the Kelly Pochette, as you may remember, came out as the winner for me. So while I won't be buying any more mini Kelly 22s, that doesn't mean that I won't request any more Kelly Pochettes because it's definitely a bag that I love. But in my collection, I just really don't see any more space for another mini Kelly 22. Unless, I mean, there is or there are a couple of colors that I wouldn't say a hard no to, but overall mini and micro bags, especially anything smaller than a Kelly Pochette, I would say is not going to be coming home with me. And my friends, this completes my list of luxury pieces, mainly pieces from Hermes that I won't be buying moving forward. I hope you enjoy this video and please let me know what's on your list. Is there anything that you're trying 
not to buy more of, or at least not in the next year, please let me know in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you back here with a new video really, really soon. But for now, bye.